Welcome back to Youth News Official, where it's for the youth, by the youth, about the youth. I'm Yuki. I'm Dylan. I'm Sophie, and today we'll be getting some insights on the different stages of art. We are joined by Jeremy, an art student majoring in illustration from the One Academy. Young Kin, a figure drawing educator from One Academy. As well as Summer, who is a user experience designer from Air Asia. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of art. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm 19 years old this year, and I'm currently studying for Diploma in Illustration for the One Academy. I've been starting to study here since June 2020, so I'll graduate about 2023, assuming I pass everything. Hello, my name is Siu Yong Kin. I'm an artist in Malaysia. I am 23 this year and I study illustration in the One Academy back in 2016. And after my studies, I work in the same college as an art tutor for two years now. Hi, my name is Summer and I'm currently 24 years old. I have graduated from Asia Pacific University with a degree in computer science. I'm currently working in Asia as a UX designer and I've been there working for one and a half years. I've honestly been drawing for my entire life. One day in secondary school, there was an exhibition for colleges. I've stumbled upon the One Academy and that gave me some insights on what the art industry and art career paths I could take. I started to take art seriously from then onwards. One time I went for an open day and Johnson Ting was there giving a demonstration. I would like to think that he's a very major role model of mine as he has really inspired me to do concept art. When I was a student, I like to help out my friends with their assignments and that gives me a sense of fulfillment knowing that I helped someone in an area that I'm familiar with. During that time, I actually thought about being an art lecturer in my college. One of my friends who happens to be an art lecturer previously, but he came here to further his studies and he told me that he sees me as a lecturer, so I went for it. How did I know that I want to do art as a career? It takes back to when I was 17 or 18 when I realized that every day, inevitably, I was doing art. For myself, just for fun, or also for the people around me, or for the college I was in. It helps me to realize that art is something that I do to make myself happy. And it's something that I felt that I can contribute, not just to myself for visual purposes, but also to the community that I was in. Who or what made me realize that art is something that I want to pursue as a career was actually me, myself. Because um, I took a long time to actually do some soul seeking, to actually learn more about myself and what makes me happy. And I realized that art was a part of it. I learned a lot of new skills that I didn't have, like marking assignments or teaching students in a big crowd. It's something that I didn't really do before because for the past few years I've been working on my drawing skills. Working as a UX designer in a corporate field helps me to realize that when you pursue a career in arts, not only do you need to have and need to possess the skills that help you to finish your job, such as your design skill, but it's also very important that you know interpersonal skills and also communication skills. Because when you finish a design piece, you're required to actually present it to stakeholders, clients, product managers, or in my case, different people in the different departments. You know, having these skills help me to let them know and convince to them why this design piece that I have provided and done matters and is very impactful. Having a 9 to 6 job, I can sometimes feel very comfortable just not doing anything after I finish work because I feel like I've worked hard, now I deserve to rest for the rest of the day. So I try to not forget that improving my own skill is also what I want. So sometimes I will give myself some projects like recording my painting process and post it on my YouTube channel or I would do some live streams while painting some digital artworks. I can do them while improving my art skills. Now that I'm in year 2, the standards and requirements are a lot higher compared to before. I found myself struggling to keep up and I'm lacking behind a lot. 
and I've recently had a burnt out because I was rushing my works a lot. I felt very guilty for both myself and my lecturers because I wasn't putting enough time and effort into my drawings. From then on, I was able to identify and know that I had to make sacrifices of my own time to produce better quality works. Some of the hardest hurdles I had, I think it all relates to my health because back then I was a very anxious person. I had a lot of anxiety. I am also very hard on myself. So with the amount of assignments and also me putting unnecessary pressure on myself, it all leads to a lot of health problem later on. And after I graduated, these problems really affected my job performance. I couldn't focus, I made a lot of mistakes. That's when I decided that I'll put my health as my priority to turn things around. I think um, one of the struggles that I face as a designer in the corporate world is the fact that I'm a fresh grad and my background is in computer science. The UX design comprises of three things which is technology, um, psychology and also design. So given the fact that um, I might have you know, knowledge in both of them, psychology and technology under the belt, but I wasn't given professional advices or have went through professional learnings for design. So um, it becomes as a what I do on a daily basis is not just to provide designs for the company, but um, I also need to up my skills as a designer as well. Through that experience, I learned to take my health seriously because I can't do my best if I don't feel good physically or mentally. Somewhere during that time, I actually lost my passion completely. As my health slowly improves, my passion for art slowly comes back. So how did I come to overcome um, this hurdle? There are two things. One is the company, my colleagues and you know, um, they are really kind and friendly to actually review each other's design. The second part is like basically it happens on the individual level. So almost every day I go on Pinterest, uh, Behance, Instagram and dribble to take a look at all these design trends and observe how the other designers put, you know, a buttons and buttons together, layout and layout together. It sounds a bit lame, but I would say my greatest accomplishment would be to be more disciplined with my time. Because uh, TOA has very heavy workload and I would organize my time very well so that I know that I have enough time to work on my stuff. I think the biggest accomplishment I had would have to be winning a full scholarship to study in the One Academy. Studying in, in an art college was always my dream. I would always dream of going to a school where they would really go in depth in art. So being able to study in the One Academy is my biggest dream back then. I think the biggest accomplishment is in the work itself. As you may know that Asia do not just serve to Malaysians only, but they serve to Singaporeans, uh, Thailand, you know, China, Indonesia and Philippines and the rest of the world. So when you create a piece, when you create a product, it doesn't just go to Malaysians, but it goes to these various nationalities with different culture of their own and their experiences translate to actually my learnings. The design piece that you created, you also receive feedback from all these users, good and bad. So the good ones, you know, when they tell you that your design has helped them to complete certain things and it was really user friendly, you know, those feedback really, you know, make me felt like I've achieved and accomplished um, sort of a little goal of mine. I came in with a very romanticized idea of if you love what you do, you won't work a day in your life. And I thought that because I was very passionate about what I like, which is just robots and monsters, that passion would drive me through college. But in reality, business is business and you're going to do a lot of things that you don't like, like perspective and backgrounds, environments and all that. The course that I took was illustration. It's catered more to the film and game industry. I'm not too obsessed with games and movies, all that. So. I feel insecure because of that. In my naive brain, if I didn't make it to an art studio, 
it means that I failed or something like that. I think one of the biggest misconceptions that I have about art is that art is just all about having a piece of paper, color pencils, watercolor and a pen and translating visuals onto that. So my mind was that art is just all about that canvas. But in my case, it's, we know it's not because my job is to design for tech and that's very different from our misconception of everything of design is just on a piece of paper. I have this misconception because I was very naive and I didn't know much about the different career paths of an artist. That's when it finally hit me. I get to decide to be the type of artist that I want to be. Once I realized that, I feel very happy and I am no longer that lost or confused anymore. I think why do we have this misconception is because that of our culture and how we brought up the knowledge that we were given. So in other parts of country, art is very valued and design is very valued because they identified that design actually is solving problems and the fact that they are much more advanced and they have UX in, as a career much more earlier than us really show in Asian culture how art is not so valued compared to the Western culture and also how our parents tell us that art is deemed useless and something that doesn't make money also contributes to the whole misconception. When they come to an art college where there's resources from art lecturers, then they are guaranteed to do fine. Uh, that's usually not the case. Just like any other skills, a big part of achieving a skill is to have a passion and to have a commitment. So a lot of work has to come from the student themselves as well in order to make the resources from the lecturers work. People don't actually really know what does a UX designer does. Okay, they always thought that my job is just designing websites, designing apps and that's it. UX design, it literally means user experience designer. So what does it does is that how can we create a product you know, that is so useful and it will help you to achieve your goal, which is for example, shopping on our website, the fastest and the easiest. I think a lot of people think the way they do about the art industry now, like not having a future. Right? I think it's because they are not familiar with it. The digital art industry especially, it's a very new industry and people don't understand it. Like IT back then, not until recently when it's more advanced, people tend to respect it more. Having the misconception of the job scope of a UX designer, I think it comes back to how are we brought up again. UX design is something that is quite new in Malaysia. I think in a general basis, misconception drives from the lack of knowledge. In my case, the lack of knowledge in UX design also contributes to the whole thing. I think it's very unfair for us artists because a lot of people form opinions about artists based on what other people think without really understanding why. I think this is a way of thinking that should really change and artists should be respected as a career more. I would advise everyone to not worry so much about the practicality of art being a career. If you are truly passionate, please do not let other people's comments affect you. And also, business is still business, you're not going to like everything you do. In the end of the day, it's still a cause to study and you will need to recognize that art is something you really need to put in effort to make it look good. If you feel uninspired, I think the first thing you can do is to try to figure out what's the reason. You might be overworking a little bit, so maybe if that's your case, then just do anything besides drawing. Whenever I have an art block now, I usually don't draw, even if I finish this drawing, it's not going to be something that I'm proud of. Uh, it makes me feel worse knowing that this is all I can do for now. So I just don't draw. I will allow myself to take a break without feeling any guilt or the fear of falling behind. After a period of time, I can feel that I'm a lot more inspired. The ideas will just come flooding into my head. 
art is a basically a tree. It has many branches. You can be a animator, you can be a 3D artist, you can be a graphic designer, interior designer, and many more. So it doesn't mean that art is just that canvas. It never is. Even in my case, design for product and tech. So try, you know, don't be afraid and don't be prevented by this misconception, but just do your own research and try it out. You may find wonders or you may find that art is may or may not be your career path. You expect that you need to put more time into it and you, it may not turn out to the thing that you want. So failure can be one of the options as well. I don't necessarily have to take this path. I can take a more diverted path, but still be in art. So that'll be it for me. Uh, thank you and good luck. Thank you Youth News for having me here. And thanks for watching. I hope that this advice and the things that I've shared previously help you guys. And thank you so much. We hope that you learn and also gain a clearer insight on the art industry. We would also like to give our biggest thanks to Jeremy, Yongkin, and Summer for sharing their time and experiences with us. Thank you for watching our video and be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more youth-based content and comment down below what you think about today's video. Check out our other social platforms in the description below. We will see you guys next time.